Welcome to BBTV Network, coming to you from the UK studios of BizVision. I'm your host, Malcolm Gallagher. If there's one word to summarize my guest today, it must be formidable. And on my rating, that is much, much higher than inspiring or stimulating. Now, let me tease you with some things about him. He ran with the bulls at Pamplona in Spain. He's climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, the highest mountain in Africa. He's rappelled down a 23-storey hotel. He's a much sought-after corporate motivational speaker. He carried the Olympic torch at the 2002 Salt Lake City Olympics. He's appeared in four winter games in the frightening sport of the luge. Oh, and he's now aiming to be a contender in his fifth next year in Beijing. He's the 59-year-old dynamo who is Ruben Gonzalez. Hello, Ruben. Malcolm, how are you? It's great I'm to just, see you. I, I'm exhausted just reading all of that. I'll never mind <laughs> get into it. You know. Where are you today, by the way? Where are you? I'm in Colorado Springs. Uh, uh, we're in uh, the state of Colorado, about 50 miles south of Denver at 7,400 feet. And uh, it's about... Uh, 65 degrees this morning. Ah, Colorado Springs sounds sort of romantic and, I don't know, uh, cowboy, <laughs> cowboyish, is it? It is. We're out in the west uh, and uh, right right up to the uh, front range of the Rocky Mountains. Pikes Peak is, uh, they call it America's Mountain, 14,000 footer, is, uh, just looks down on our town. So it's a, it's a beautiful place. It's about a half a million people and a great place to raise a family. Wonderful, wonderful. Ruben, I was fearful <laughs> to do this interview. I'd have to chase you up a mountain with a camera, hold my stomach and camera as we <laughs> chatted with you doing a ro- aerobatics. So I'm glad we're talking sedately via Zoom. You know, <laughs> Viewers and listeners, I'll be talking to Ruben in four parts, but you may only hear or see three parts if I can remember to edit out the part four. First, I'll ask him, what his message is for my silverpreneur and general audience and listeners in part two. I'm intrigued to find out how he goes about being a competitor in the Winter Olympics. And in part three, I want to talk to him about the message he brings us in his corporate motivational speaking. There's a part four, but as I said, I hope to remember to edit that out. Ruben, before we get into my questions, can you please briefly introduce yourself to my viewers and listeners? Who is Ruben Gonzalez and what makes you jump out of bed in the morning? Hey, if you can, I'd have creaky bones if I'd done all you have. <laughs> You're a hoot. <laughs> well, I tell people I'm, I'm just a common guy that's gotten to do some uncommon things. I'm like your neighbor. Uh, all my life, I wanted to be in the Olympics, but it was a pipe dream because I'm not a great athlete. I can't jump high. I can't run fast. I'm not particularly strong. I mean, I really am like your neighbor, but desire will make you do things uh, that, that are incredible. If you want something badly enough, uh, nothing will make you quit. So uh, I was born in Argentina. My dad was a chemical engineer with Exxon. We came to the States when I was six years old. I was raised in the States. And um uh, and that's when I heard about the Olympics, right? If I had stayed in Argentina, they don't even play it on TV over there. All they care about is soccer, football, right? Yeah. yeah. Hello? So, there we And so, uh, came to the States and uh, uh, always wanted to, saw the Olympics when I was 10. I was hooked. And it wasn't about the, uh, the athleticism. That's, that's not what drew me to it. It was the, it was the athlete's spirit, their heart, because I realized this is a group of people that have a dream. They're willing to train for years and years and years, no guarantees of success. And then finally they make it. I thought you have to be so strong to put yourself through that. They were everything I wasn't, and I want to be like them. And I put them up on a pedestal and they became my heroes. And uh, I was the last kid chosen for school sports all my life. So I, so I didn't believe it was possible. So I didn't do anything. For, for 11 years, I didn't do anything. And in 84, I'm watching the Sarajevo games on TV and I see Scott Hamilton. And if you're from England, you probably don't know who this guy is, but he's a household name in the U.S. He's, he's a figure skater, a little tiny guy, about five foot one, 110 pounds soaking wet. And this 18 year old kid wins the gold medal in figure skating. And he gave me hope. I thought if that little guy can win, I can at least play. I'm going to be in the next ones no matter what. I just have to find a sport. <laughs> and so now I had the belief to go with the desire. Yeah. I lived in Houston at the time, Houston, Texas, hot, humid, flat, sticky. And my nickname was Bulldog because I was always very tenacious, very perseverant. 
And so I thought I'm, I'm a, I need to uh, make a plan for the next four years. It'd probably be smart to base the plan on my strengths. My strength is perseverance. It's not athleticism. I'm bulldog. So I thought I need to find a sport that's uh, so, so tough, a sport with so many broken bones in it, there'd be a lot of quitters, right? <laughs> and I just won't quit. I'll outlast everybody. I'll ride the attrition rate all the way to the top. And that was my whole plan. And so I, I, I picked the luge, sliding down the ice on the bobsled track, 80, 90 miles an hour. I thought, that fits the bill. <laughs> and so I, I, I didn't know where the track was. So I wrote Sports Illustrated a letter. I asked them, where do you go learn how to luge? And uh, they actually wrote back. They said, Lake Placid, New York. That's, a, that's where the track is. And I called them up. And at first they laughed. They said, man, you're 21. There's no way. You should have 10 years experience at your age. And, and uh, try to talk me out of it. I wouldn't take no for an answer. I know if I hang up the phone, it's all over. And so I kept them on the phone. And eventually, you know, they, they said, hey, there's a class. You know, you can come in a couple of months uh, on wheels. And you'll learn on wheels, and then you know we'll move you to ice if you survive wheels. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so four years and a few broken bones later, I made it. I, I got I cracked into the top fifty in the world. I got to compete in the 1988 Calgary Olympics in Canada, and it was outstanding. Uh, then I went on and competed in Alberville in '92, and then I, I wanted to try something new. I you know I had enough Olympics, so I, I retired. I didn't slide for seven years. Then my coach talked me into coming back. He said, Salt Lake City, you know, uh, you don't want to miss Salt Lake. You know, the U.S. Olympic spirit is the best. You'll regret it. And so I started training again. I made Salt Lake. Uh, went with my brother. He, I, I, I talked him into it. He started training. We both made it. We made Olympic history. Two brothers compete against each other. Meluge quit again. Started speaking professionally and, and writing books. And... For six years, again, I, I didn't slide. I was done. Uh, my challenge was build this business. And then I, uh, two years before Vancouver, I thought, you know, why, why not? No one's ever done four Olympics in four different decades. I mean, that would be Guinness Book of World Records stuff, right? <laughs> and so I started again. I made, I made Vancouver at age 47. And um, everybody thought I was a coach. <laughs> so, all the coaches and the track workers are saying, do it for the old guys. <laughs> and so uh, uh, I went back a couple of years ago at 55, and I, I got the itch again. And I was sliding better than ever, mentally stronger, right? So that's one of, the, one of my messages uh, to, to your silverpreneurs. Where, you know, the older you are, the more experience you have, and you're, you are mentally stronger. And you can do lots of things that you couldn't do when you were 20. When you had all the energy, but no, no experience, right? No knowledge. Yeah. And you have connections now you, that, that you've developed over a lifetime. So, um, uh, no, it's, it's actually an advantage. Don't, don't, don't look at it as a disadvantage. And so uh, I started training and uh, then COVID hit, killed, <laughs> killed the funds. And so um, I'm hoping to train. Usually they take the last two years, the last two seasons of World Cup races you tally up all the points, right? It's just like Formula One. You get points at the end of every race. Uh, and I know being from England, you know a little bit about Formula One, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, the top 35 get to go now to Beijing. And uh, the coaches say I have a shot. I have a brand new sled. It's a lot faster. Uh, last season, I couldn't even go because, you know, COVID hit. And, and But they, I just found out that they're not counting last season because it hurt a lot of uh, a lot of other athlete, athletes as well. So just they're counting this upcoming season, seven World Cup races uh, taking place this, this this winter, and top 35 get to go to the Olympics, right? 56, watch, I mean, the top 35, 36 watches it on TV. So I'm trying, frantically raising money, right, to try to yeah. go and, and make it happen. So uh, uh, do it for I, the old guys. I'm, right? I'm, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just like, I'm, I'm just... I'm over overwhelmed with admiration. I, you know, but I've I, yeah, I've told you of our involvement in the Olympics and everything. So I've held the gold medal. Gosh, is it heavy, isn't it? Really? Uh, and it, it <laughs> you, you, it's almost like um, I thought it was Harrison Ford. You know, just haven't discovered that uh, the Holy Grail uh, or something there. It was, <laughs> yeah. Okay, Ruben, this is all for my silver BBTV silverpreneurs, those age 50 plus are approaching it. These last 18 months with COVID and its fallout impact have been disastrous for this age group. They may have lost their jobs, lost money, lost impetus, lost perhaps direction. 
you're an achiever. What can you say to them to help them also to be achievers and realize their personal value and new destiny? You know, I don't know what it's like in England, but I suspect it's very similar to the United States. Here in the U.S., most people hate their job, okay? They, they're, they're doing something that they, that they don't like. It's not in their heart, but uh, they're stuck, right? Because they don't hate it bad enough to quit, right? And look for something that might fit them better. So when, uh, when I tell people, hey, if you lost your job, again, you got to look at the silver lining, right? Maybe now you have an opportunity to find something that fits you, right? And this could be the best thing that, that ever happened to you. We had to think about it that way, because if you don't, then you just you get depressed and stuck, right? You have to constantly uh, look for, for the win, right? Mm-hmm. Um, in American football, the, 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 the running back, the guy that carries the ball and he's trying to get through, He's got all these monsters in front of him that weigh 300 pounds. They're trying to kill him, right? And they say the best ones, they just look for a little sliver of daylight. Run to daylight, right? If you can find that daylight, then you got it a couple of more feet, maybe a yard, maybe maybe a touchdown, right? It's still got to run to daylight. That's what you have to do. Excellent. I love that. Run to daylight. I should make a real good note of that. Uh, Ruben, before we move to part two, I'd just like to remind viewers and listeners of your website URL. Now, you're going to have to write this down, listeners. Viewers, obviously, you can see it behind me. But listeners, viewers, get this down because, um, you know, when Ruben is standing on the podium at, in Beijing, you're going to be able to say, I know him. I know him. So get make sure you're writing this down. It's all the W's, all the W's. Ruben, which is spelt R-U-B-E-N, Ruben hyphen Gonzalez, G-O-N-Z-A-L-E-Z dot com. So it's Ruben hyphen Gonzalez dot com. Or you can have a look, look at another site called all the W's, the Luge, L-U-G-E man, the Luge man dot com. Ruben, I'm intrigued. How do you go about being a Winter Olympics competitor at your young age? There's surely funding to find, exhaustive and expensive training and equipment, not to mention probably a few grumbles from younger athletes saying, move over, Ruben. What's your thoughts and actions here? You know what? When I, when I went back to Calgary after all those years, and I was 55. It's funny, a a couple of guys that were, gosh, they could have been my grandkids, right? That they were Mm. competing for uh, uh, Eastern Bloc countries. They said, Gonzalez, respect. They, 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 I guess they thought, man, grandpa's not doing this. (laughs) (laughs) So I haven't had any rumblings. (laughs) So that's nice. And so uh, how do I do it? You know, it's just, uh, I get bored easily. You know, I just, the way I'm wired, I get bored easily. I need a challenge. If life is going too well, too smoothly, um, you know, I'm on edge, right? I got to do something. That's why six years after building my business, starting my business and starting to run well, I got bored. It wasn't challenging enough. So that's why I went for that fourth Olympics. And and, and now uh, this is a great opportunity. I mean, being able to do five, it would be the first person to do five Winter Olympics in five different decades and the oldest Winter Olympian in history at 59. Now, the, the record is 90 eight-year-old record from a, a Swedish curler from the 1924 Olympics. And so uh, how cool would that be, right? Uh, yeah, do it for the old guys. That should be my new my, my new website. Do it for the old guys. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but you're not old yet. Don't forget, you know, you're not old till you're in, the, in your, ni- your 90s. But, no, I'm not old here. Yeah, I know. Listen, um, <laughs> I'm sure there's many businesses out there. Uh, many people would love to help you uh, achieve what you're doing. How can they help you? Gosh, I want to, uh, I don't want charity. I want to do a win-win, right? We, I'd love to brainstorm with you to figure out ways of helping your company, right? Listeners, your company, and uh, and you're helping me at the same way. So I have a site called, it's a, it's a crowdfunding site called uh, oldestolympian.com. Oldestolympian.com. It's a place where you can donate, but depending on how much you donate, I'll come speak for you, or I might do a virtual presentation for your team, or books, et cetera, right? So it's a, it's a win-win. It's not just, and if you do $100 or more, you get your picture on my sled. I'm making a mosaic on the bottom of the sled with uh, the pictures of everybody that contributes, so we all get to ride together. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yeah, uh, just 
you know, virtually, that'll be fine, you know, because um, I've seen, <laughs> I've seen, the, I've seen the luge and I can only sort of look at it with one eye just in case, you know, I damage the other one. Uh, Ruben, you're in a much in demand corporate motivational speaker with a list of well known companies who've hired you. I can understand them doing that because you're a high, uh, high level formidable achiever, but not everyone can be a Ruben Gonzalez. What's the message to take to that everyday employee attending one of your talks? What do you aim for them to gain from listening to you? Same message I've given my kids ever since they were five, six years old. I've always told them, don't try to be like me. Don't try to be an Olympian, okay? You have to figure out what your dream is and go after that. You can be an Olympic teacher. You can be a gold medal engineer. You could be a uh, a gold medal uh, 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 taxi driver, right? As long as you're the best of the best of the best. And uh, as long as you have no regrets at the end, uh, you know, you live life well. Yeah, yeah. In other words, almost be um, an Olympian winner in your own home. Exactly. Uh, Martin Luther King said, and I'm not even going to try to quote it, but he said, if you're a, a street sweeper, be such a magnificent street sweeper that the angels in the you know, in heaven will say, there is the best, you know, street sweeper in the world, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah try to win the gold medal where you are. Yeah. I, I, I love your energy. I love your energy. Uh, and um, not everybody has that energy. So what do, you, what do you tap into? it? Is it something inner within you or have you grown that energy yourself? You know, believe it or not, I'm an, uh, I'm an introvert, okay? You put me in a networking or... Uh, room or you know a meeting or or at a party i'm the guy hiding behind the plant okay (laughs) (laughs) so i will not go and introduce myself to someone but if you get me talking about the olympics or personal development or how to reach your goals it's like uh clark kent turns into superman right but i'm clark kent in real life you don't need don't need a a telephone box you don't need a telephone box i just light up you know Uh, that's my passion and so i believe that everybody has a passion and if they tap into that passion, then they turn into Superman, too, because that passion is the, the source of your superpower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So find your passion is what you're saying, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Life's I, too short to uh, do something you don't like. That's for certain. Ruben, part four. Now, I'm intending to edit this out, so it will really be just between you and me. Is that okay? You know, what's your secret? Uh, yeah. Listen, I keep this quiet. What's your secret of aging well? What's your health regime or fitness philosophy? Is there a magic elixir? And can anyone from, say, 50 to um, early 70s do it like an aging anchor host? Um, You know. (laughs) You become like the people you associate with. You know that, right? Uh, And and why is that? Because you pick up their habits, right? Mm. And so I tell people... If you want to um, lose 10 pounds, why don't you start hanging around some skinny people, okay? You'll, you'll, you'll find yourself jogging and eating salads, and you won't even, it won't even hurt because you will have picked up, right? Because you, so I always tell people, go find people that have already done what you want to do and associate with them. If you're the smaller, smartest person in the room, you need to go to another room, right? <laughs> so um, as far as food, you know, it's, uh, I try to keep it low carb, right? Low carb. And uh, that, that, that works for me. Lots of stretching. In fact, uh, the coaches don't want me to lift weights right now. They said, no, you're strong enough for what you need to do, right? Because we, we train sports specific, right? Uh, but he says, no, you need to do more yoga. You've been sitting down at that desk uh, writing books for, for, for t- almost 20 years. We need to stretch you out so you can be faster at the start. And so lots of yoga. And when I started doing yoga and stretching in the morning, it's amazing how, how much better I felt. Uh, mm-hmm. The aches and pains went away. It bores me to tears to do it, okay? The whole time I'm telling myself, I'm going to feel better. I'm going to feel better. <laughs> but those are, uh, are little things. And, and as far as a secret, I would say secret sauce for, uh, for reaching your goals faster, find somebody that's already done it, follow in their footsteps. And everybody says the same thing. Oh, I don't want to impose. I don't want to, uh, you know, those people are so busy. I don't want to waste their time. And I tell them, look, as long as your attitude is that you're willing to do whatever they tell you, as long as you're going to be an action person, not just an internal learner, then you're not wasting their time. And this is why. Have you ever heard how people will say, oh, she's, 
she, she's successful, but she's not happy inside. Oh, he's successful, but he's looking for something else. He's not happy either. Well, the reason is success is not the gold medal. Success is the silver medal. Okay. The gold medal is significance. That means you help somebody else succeed. You made a difference. You created a ripple effect uh, of success. Uh, because of you, the world is better. Okay. And so if you go to it, you approach that mentor and your attitude is you're going to make it happen, then they'll help you get the, the silver and you help them get the gold and you'll become best friends uh, along the way. And so that's, that's the secret sauce. Just go do it. And by the way, how do you approach them? Right. Well, you don't ask them, will you be my mentor? Okay, that's like somebody asking somebody to mar marry you on their first date. No, you just ask them for coffee. Say, hey, I respect what you've done. I've always wanted to do what you've wanted, you know, what you've done. Could, could, could I pick your brain? Could we have coffee for an hour? And then you take one of these things filled with questions and you just ask them, right? And at the end, ask them for an assignment. Ask them, hey, what should I do before we meet next month? Because mm -hmm. I promise you, whatever you say, I'll do it. Now you're showing them that you're a, uh, an action person. Right. My first mentor, the, my mentor for speaking, he said, if we ever meet and you haven't done last month's assignment, it's over. OK. And, and, and I agree 100 percent. But if you do it that way, you will be amazed at what you do. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. It, it, that was so brilliant that I'm going to go back on what I said beforehand. I'm not going to edit it out. I'm going to keep it within the interview. Is that all right? <laughs> it's fine with me. <laughs> OK, listen, listen, um, I just want to remind people because, uh, you know, um, when the Beijing Olympics comes around and everybody's sitting around the telly watching it or in the sports bar or whatever thing, they all want to give that big cheer to their person who will be standing on the podium getting that medal. And so therefore, try and help Ruben get there, won't you, with his win-win approach. <laughs> Go along to... Uh, oldestolympian.com, oldestolympian.com. Now, I said at the beginning of this interview that my word for my guest today was formidable. <laughs> I don't think there are many more words that can also apply to this dynamic and warm person. Thanks, Ruben Gonzalez, for a great interview. We'll be cheering you for you in Beijing next year, but only if you promise to come back and show us your gold medal. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. I like it. It's a deal. <laughs>